All right, good morning. It is Monday, June 3rd. We are into June. So um, last week was an amazing week. We came off on Memorial Day and it was packed down here, but probably the best weather um, that I've seen for a full snapshot week. I finally had some some friends in town from Baton Rouge that have been like rained out the last five times they've been here, they felt like. And um, if you were here this past week, you saw how amazing it is. And um, it's been a busy but interesting week. We've got some great opportunities coming up on our end. We have two new listings we're getting photos of this week. We're launching a new development called Turquoise that I'm gonna walk you guys through. It's gonna be 66 homes, ranging from like 2.5 million to three and a half million range. Um, I'm gonna do a completely separate video on that just to break it down for you guys. But we're really excited, a lot of opportunity coming up. But let's just get into the numbers because I kinda got some stories to tell and I kinda wanna show you what's going on in the numbers and what's messing with our, uh, how we're getting a feel for what's going on. All right, so uh, let's dive into it. So, new listing, 61. Same, right? I mean, nothing surprising there, 61 new listings, all right? Let's just get down to it. Pending, 29, okay? So right on that range, a little a little lighter than that 50% we've been seeing, but 29 is good. I felt that. I will tell you kind of the week coming off of Memorial Day. I'm not shocked. A lot of people in town, everybody's selling back in, so not terribly um, shocking that that might be down a little bit on the pendings. No trend there, just something to point out. Closing's 33, so here we are again. And we talked about this a lot, and I'm gonna be broken record about it, but I've been waiting for the consistency on the closings to match the consistency of the contracts that were written. Because when I'm talking to my fellow agents and my team, we are getting these deals across the finish line. We are closing. So it wasn't making sense to me that the closings were not matching all these pending numbers that we've seen. And it's showing that it's not. I mean, it's showing that it is. It's matching, sorry. Um, so here's an interesting one. Um, let, let's go to price changes. I'm moving up. Price change is 53. Now, if you've been watching the last couple of weeks, this is pretty significantly down. Um, here's why. I think that last week, midweek, um, we had a lot more price reductions going into the weekend that was, okay? But um, this didn't pick that up. So this is a bit of an anomaly for a low number of price changes based on what we've seen. So I do think that number is going to creep back up higher, but this week it's actually the price changes are lower than the new listings for the first time in, in a little while, right? Um, the interesting one to me right now, and it's going to mess with the inventory. And this is, I, I just kind of want to give you behind the scenes of how this works because just so you know, the reason I bring you this digital version of me talking to you through the hot sheet is that the hot sheet has changed so much over the years because everybody gets everything in their inbox instantly, okay? There was a time that not so much of the automated was set up and we would just be pushing this out, okay? And it wasn't kept up with, but, or the new listings hit, whether it be Boomtown or whatever price reduction, you're getting an automatic email every time. You guys get it live when I do, okay? But here's the trick. You can look at the report this morning and go, Casey, I'm seeing that the total inventory is down, but then you see 61 expired homes, okay? Expired means that they had a set amount of time on MLS, let's say it's six months to a year, and then it hit that date and it went expired, all right? I would chalk 90% of this up to, this was not intentional that this was gonna expire today, and they're gonna be coming back on the market. So I don't think we actually just had 61 properties leave the market that are not going to be back on. Okay. That's more for the canceled and the withdrawn inventory that you see up here. But these expires, what I'm saying to you is probably by the end of the day, you're going to look on there. I bet you 50 of those are back on the market. Okay. So it just messes with the numbers. So I don't want you to see that number and go, man, it looks like some people are just not going to try to sell. They certainly are. So, so what's going on out there? Well, I'll tell you, like we're writing, we're writing contracts and you know, funny enough, I had somebody in this week and they were enjoying it. Now they want to see some property, like the activity level is there. All right. And I think the main story is that we're getting into that time of season when it's really hard to even show property, like it's getting difficult, but we are having to continually play this patient game. And I had another example this week of a property that's been 
quiet. And then I had somebody just blowing my phone up, asking me a lot of questions about it, trying to get as much info as possible. And I tell you where the trick is, it's amazing. These price reductions work, and it's almost like a, a, a test. Like, I get it. Like, I've seen price reductions in the two to $5,000 range that make my buyers reach out and go, hey, saw this latest reduction, what do you think? And I'm trying to get across that I think that we're getting trained to treat these reductions as a sign of motivation. So it's a strategy on behalf of agents because it's working. It's a strategy on behalf of sellers because it's working. It's a strategy on behalf of buyers because they're reading it as the motivation level for the party, all right? So price changes have become this, um, I guess it's always been a marketing technique, but rather than just they get to the point, like people are doing it strategically just like they would an old print ad. Does that make sense? So like, it's just, I love the evolution of the market. I love uh, kind of how this plays out. One thing I'm not liking is that the new inventory continues to be um, not true because we've got parties that are canceling listings and bringing them back on new. And look, I'll play the game. But if you have a price reduction, you can cancel the listing, bring it back on, and it'll show up in your inbox as a new listing with a new price. And you may think, well, this just came to market. May have been out there 200 days, okay? So it's just a little bit of the gamemanship that's going on out there. But overall, I will tell you, I keep going back to this and am learning this, but it, like I've got a customer right now that's wanting rental info. We're trying to find them investment property. And I'm really, just so you know, for my buyers, and if you're one of my buyers watching this, I'm really focusing on this year's rental income. And it's taken me a minute. I'm not really relying on projections, and I almost could care less about last year. The history is nice. I love a property that's got like four or five years worth of history. That's very important because it shows you what they can do over time, and it can show you a consistency window. Love it. Now, I'm not trying to single out new construction because it just is what it is. And these rental companies are really good at finding comps. But here's, here's my point. When I'm working with a customer right now, I'm very focused on getting the actual that's happened this year and what they have on the books this year. And for them going forward, I want them to have that and have that those numbers as expectation. Because I truly think that's what's going to happen. Now, it's not a bad thing. We're renting well but I'm discounting everything else and I really want to see the actuals and it's taken me a minute. It's probably taken me longer than it ever has to get factual information on the rentals to our buyers just because we're not willing to rely on the projections and things like that like we had the last couple of years just because it's been such a difference this year in certain pockets. Some places are still staying pace with what they were doing last couple of years, okay? And the rental's very healthy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a 50% down or anything like that. We're just working to get the actual rental income so we can use that as a true barometer. And sellers, if you would please have your agents just have that information ready and available, it means so much. Like we try to have it, if somebody calls us on one of our listings, if they want to buy that property while they're in the kitchen, while they're looking at it, we have the information ready for them. So if you're a seller watching this, and you know that your agent doesn't have all the actual rental info right now, please get it to them to make our lives easier. So um, listen, I'm excited. Like I said, we're, uh, we got photos going tomorrow, going to preview a new listing right now and a lot of fun stuff going on. So, um, and I promise you, I keep teasing this, that rental is coming, that rental interview. We're doing that this week. We will knock that out for you. Um, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, but we're going to knock that out for you so we can get you that information. So as always, uh, let me know if we can help you and, um, talk to you soon.